In this video, I'm going to talk about probability, um, experimental versus theoretical. I'm not really doing verses. It's just sort of, I already wrote verses on there, so I'm going to stick with it. Anyway, um, when we talk about probability, what we're really doing is just answering the question of how likely something is to happen. So um, if there, uh, and it kind of goes on a scale, you go up from zero to one. Zero means no chance. It's not going to happen. Uh, one means absolutely. And if you convert them into um, uh, percentages, zero percent versus a hundred percent really is where it's all going. So uh, you might say in half, by the way or 0 0.5 or whatever it happens to be, 50%. Uh, one's just, it's just as likely to happen as it's not. Just as likely as not. So it could go either way, and you know there's no sort of pushing one way versus the other. So let's talk about experimental uh, probability. I should say that the overall, oops, I didn't mean to hit that. I meant to hit this. Uh, the overall story of all this is total usually ends up on the bottom. It could be the total number of times you did something. It could be the total possibilities that are there. And on top, it tends to focus um, more on you know success, like that it happened at all. So uh, when you flip a coin, for instance, the total number of opportunities would be two, uh, heads or tails. And then the successes would be, I want to know how many heads, I want to know if it's heads or tails, so there's one out of two chance that it would happen. It's sort of the uh, gist of it. Now, when I do experimental probability, I did it again. I'm getting good at it. Um, when I do experimental probability, I'm looking at the number of trials on the bottom, and then on the top, I'd say uh, the number of times something happens. Uh, they do this in factories all the time, and then they use the information. Uh, so uh, say I was testing a thousand random things. So my total is going to be a thousand. I found that three of them were defective. So now, from now, I want to know what the probability is of getting a defective product. Uh, by the way, if they ask what the probability of getting one that's not defective, you do a uh, thousand minus three. But anyway, we'll set up the total number of trials would be a thousand. The defective one would be 3, so I'll do uh, 3 divided by 1,000 and get 0 .003. Likely, I'll turn it into a percentage, so I'll multiply by 100, and I'll end up getting 0.3%, which is, from a manufacturing standpoint, maybe acceptable. It depends on what you're manufacturing, I guess, in your company, but I have a 0.3% chance of ending up with a defective product. How can I use that? I can use it to determine, well, what happens if I make 20,000 of them? So now I want to make, I want to know the probability, or I want to know the number of item, number of defective ones that's likely out of 20,000. So what all I have to do is take 20,000. and multiply it by the 0 0.003, and I end up getting 60. So if I have 60, uh, if I have 20,000 of them, I can expect it's very likely that I'll end up getting 60 ones of them that are defective. Now at that point, it might start seem, uh, it might start to seem like that's a lot, uh, but maybe not. You know, it just sort of depends on how well you're manufacturing process works and how you know touchy it is and that sort of thing. Anyway, that's experimental probability. You're basically just taking, uh, you're, you've done the trials for real and then uh, you figured out what the likelihood is that something will happen or something that won't. Um, 
So now let's move on to theoretical. Theoretical is where you're doing it based on the number of outcomes and not actually have performed any trials at all. You're doing it sort of in your head, that sort of thing. What we might call that uh, in terms of uh, the outcome that we're dealing with is called the sample space. That's all possible outcomes. Just as a little vocab there. All possible outcomes would be the sample space. Um, so when I'm doing a theoretical probability, what I'm really working with is the total number of items in the sample space would be in, on the bottom, so that's the total number. And then on top, once again, I'm sort of dealing with the uh, preferred outcome. For instance, uh, say you're uh, rolling dice, which is you know pretty common. Uh, I may say that uh, I want to know what the probability of rolling a six would be on one die, which is the singular form of dice. So I want to know the probability of rolling a 3. By the way, probability notation can be very annoying uh, because it says probability 3, but in this case 3 doesn't mean there's 3 of them, it just means the number 3. So when you have the little parentheses around it, in most cases, uh, or in some cases like in, uh, in the die situation, you're dealing with number 3 being a label. So they want to know what the probability is of getting number 3, not 3 of them, just the number 3. On a die there's only one number 3 and there's six in the sample space for that one roll so there's a total probability of one over six. That's really you know sort of super common. Uh, so maybe we want to do um, if I'm gonna do one roll and there's two of them what do I do then? So I have two dice and what I'm looking for is it to add up to Uh, so the first thing I need to do is figure out what the total number of possibilities would be. Well, the total number of possibilities in this case, so my bottom part would be, well, there's six of them, and then I'm going to roll again, so six again. So uh, that's how I get my total value. Now, on the sum part on top, I need to take a look at what numbers make up five before I you know, kind of go anywhere else. So uh, 1 and 4 makes up 5. It helps, in this case, you could just do a bit of a, it's almost like a factor tree, but you're adding. Uh, I don't know, I sort of set up like a factor, I didn't mean to. Uh, 4 plus 1, uh, one of the die could be 2, and then you roll a 3, or 3, and then you roll a 2. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, preferred outcomes that would get me the sum of 5 that I'm looking for. So I would put 4 right on top. And I would write it, by the way, as this, probability sum of 5. So now that I set that up, I get 4 over 36, or 1 ninth. A lot of theoretical probability tends to end up in a fraction form. It isn't always that way, but it does sometimes. Uh, so looks, let's look at um, using combinations, uh, it, which is com, uh, combinatorics. It's the weirdest word ever. What happens if you have to use combinations to do probability? Sometimes you do. Uh, let's talk about a deck of cards. So I'm going to play five card stud. And if you don't know, there's 52 cards in a deck. Uh oh, I got a little weird. It slid on me. That's what happened. So there's 52 cards in a deck, total. And I want to know, when I play uh, five cards side, you have five cards total in your uh, hand. So your hand has five cards in hand. I want to know what the probability of getting a pair of jacks is. And no more than that, just to know uh, the uh, like not three, just two 
two jacks. Now, I need to treat it differently. The first thing I need to do is deal with this relationship here, because I need to know what my total sample space uh, is going to be. So to do that, I need to do a combination, because it doesn't matter what five cards that I pick, or it doesn't matter uh, what order the five cards are in, they're just laying in your hand. You can move them over to you know, the left or right of them however you want, they're your five cards. Uh, but in this case, I need to do a combination of 52 total, and I want to know, okay, I pull five out. Usually when you play this, uh, they'll play it like a World Series of Poker style, where you get two past you and then they lay three out on the table, that whole thing. Anyway, um, so I'm dealing with a combination of five cards out of 52 total. From here, I need to address specifically what happens with the jacks. So I need to deal with just jacks as a separate part of the deck. In a uh, set of cards, there are four jacks total, but I only want to know about two of them. To increase the complexity, I need to deal with um, what happens to the other cards. So I need to think about, well, I mean, those two, it could be any two of those jacks that I want in any order. It could be the heart and uh, diamonds or, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter to me which two jacks they are. I just want two jacks. Now I need to deal with what happens with the rest of the cards. So in that case, I have 52 cards total, and I'm taking four out of the equation because I'm dealing with them in this combination up here. So there's 48 left. And out of that, I pull two cards out of my hand. So there's three that are sitting on the table. So, or wherever they happen to be, a combination of my hand and the table. But anyway, um, so I'm dealing with a 48 set and then three of those cards. So this deals with all of it. I put my total on the bottom, the total scenario, and then I deal with my little subset I'm dealing with to give me the first two, and then I want to deal with the combinations that are left over for all other possible cards. When I end up uh, sort of working that out, for a combination of two, gives you six, then you'll start to get into some pretty big numbers because 48 really starts to sort of mess with the works a little bit. 48 combination three gives you 17,296 and 52 combination five gives you 2,598,960. Which is just gigantic. So once I get that thing going, I end up with something around 0.04-ish, somewhere in that range. And if I wanted to uh, uh, turn that into a percentage, I would make multiply by 100 and get somewhere around 4%. So to end up with two jacks in my hand or a pair of jacks, I've got about a 4% chance of doing it. So that's probability uh, when I have to use combinations to do it. But experimental, you do trials, you put your outcomes that you wanted on top, and you put your total number of trials on the bottom. Theoretical, you need to deal with the idea of uh, the total sample space on the bottom, total possible outcomes. And on top, you want to do your preferred ones, like what you're looking for, what's the chance of that happening. And then in uh, using combinations, you take your subsets, in this case the jacks, multiply by whatever else you need to deal with, that isn't that's in the sample space that you need to organize and then at the bottom you just have the total number of possibilities uh, of choosing the number of cards that you want so that's it